He raru ki uta, he raru ki tai koe, ko te puna kōrero, te āwai kōrero, ka maringi noa i te rānei, i tēnei pai kōrero, i kia nei, ko Mata. Welcome to Mata with me, Mihi Ngārangi Forbes, brought to you by Te Māngai Pāho and the Public Interest Journalism Fund. A koa nei, soon we'll talk to former Ngāti Raukawa Green MP Denise Roche and commentator Shane Te Pou about co-governance, Auckland Council and crybabies. Hoia no hei uaki i te wānanga, the government has attempted to not throw the baby out with the bathwater while ditching parts of its contentious Three Waters policy. It's been rebranded Affordable Water Reform and the number of regional water entities has increased from four to ten. The so-called co-governance elements of the policy remains, uh, remains, with the Prime Minister pointing out there's no requirement for the entity boards to be co-governed only the group the boards report to. The far, far north is part of a catchment area which includes 45 hapū and iwi, and there's no change to their boundary. So what does this mean for them? Hei whakamārama i ngā tini pānga ki tōna rohe, ko honomai ko te koromatua o te tai toke rau ki te rake, ko moko te panea. Tēnā koe hoa. Hei, tēnā koe hoa. Mihi nui ama. Kia koe hoki. Run me through what are the water issues uh, for your rohe? Oh, how much time do we have here? Why are we going to talk about the water issues here in the just far a, north? Just briefly. No, no do, do you know what? The far north has, has the most water infrastructure more than any other of the other 66 territorial authorities in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So we have um, a large population, 72,000 people, but spread across 40 different towns and settlements, which means, you know, for a council that have got one city, they probably only need one wastewater treatment plant. Us here in the far north, everyone lives all over the show. So it means we've got 16 wastewater treatment plants, eight water treatment plants, and 22 urban stormwater drainage networks, which all come at a cost when it means we need to upgrade them or when we need to look at culturally appropriate means of wastewater disposal, because right now it's, we're not doing that whatsoever. And that all comes at a cost that we up here can't actually afford. Yeah, so what does this... Well, it's similar model because you're still in the same entity, Entity A. I think there's 1.8 million people in your Takewa from the tip all the way down to Pukekohe. But what does the new water reform mean for you, for your council and your, your people? Yeah, so, well, I mean, when we, when we look at it um, just based on numbers, Right, the final district and Kaipara district are the winners in this entity. Um, when we paired with the cities with Whangarei and Auckland, you know, the cross subsidisation um, means that, you know, we're better off. But I still have a lot of concerns and our whanau still have a lot of concerns too. And it does come down to a lot of trust and waiting to see, you know, if the proof is in the pudding that, you know, our priorities across our wastewater treatment system are going to be met over you know the priorities in two of our biggest cities in the upper north island for example um but it, it is going to come down to seeing like operationally how that is going to work i mean i keep saying to john lamont you know the um the chief executive of water entity a um kaiko is ready and waiting to be the headquarters of this new water entity you know don't put it in the city bring it here then we'll have a little bit more comfort that we know that you will have our best interests at heart as well here in the north uh, you know, at the moment, uh, Ngāpuhi is asking the government to upgrade or to sort out Lake Ōmāpere. Is that the kind of kaupapa that you think will come under this framework or is or will that be left up to your kaunihira to look after? Oh, I, I think that this is um, a, a prime example of, of where it will come into play. I mean... Lake Ōmāpere previously used to be the municipal supply for Kaikui Township for fresh water. Um, that lake is in no state. It, it has been used uh, for emergencies in the past and we're facing a drought, but it's in no state right now. It ne needs to be cleaned up. So, you know, with better buying power, if we look at a supermodel, actually maybe we will have the resources available to see that come back online as, you know, the largest inland lake here in Northland as not only a municipal supply, but a supply for, um, you know, pastoral as well. Uh, you know, just add water and you, you see where things go. Um, we've got a brand new city being built out in Drury between um, Papakura and Pukekohe. That's the prime growing land for our country. Well, do you know what the mid-north here up in Kaikohe, Kirikiri is ready to take over from that if need be, and all we need is just the means to do so. That's getting all of our water supplies up and running mm. um, to be able to, you know, provide the country. I mean, it could be transformational for the north. 
So Lake Omapiri, for those who don't know, is currently the backup water um, supply for mm -hmm. Kaikohe. The National Party wants to repeal uh, this legislation and their choice is that more, more status quo, but actually what they're asking is that, you know, councils kind of come together, make their own plans and go off and find their own funding. You know, how would Lake Omapiri, you know, the, the upgrade or, or restoration of that lake work under that system? Oh, and it just won't because we'll have to prioritise, you know, the, the, the these are dreams um, that ultimately, you know, the lake pays the price. The, the modi of our lake pays the price whenever it comes down to um, talking about how much money we have available because the very real needs of upgrading our, uh, um, you know, degrading uh, water supply lines, our pipes, our uh, infrastructure, our plants and everything like that is going to come first and foremost so that we can make sure we supply water to our people. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm sceptical about um, Labour's plans and, and ensuring that on the ground when it's up and running, we are going to see the benefits that we need to see here in the final. But under National's plan, I mean, we're not going to be any better off. They're going to ring fence what we can spend on waters do you know what that will mean? That will come to the detriment of all of the other things that we need to make sure we're doing as a council to ensure that our, and I say it all the time, but I'll say it again, ensure that our people aren't just surviving, but can actually thrive here in the far north. Mm. And that means more than, you know, just making sure that um, wastewater is treated appropriately, that we provide fresh water, but it's like upgrading our roads. It's it's the nice to haves, it's the parks and playgrounds, it's shade sales over our parks because we've got, you know, the UV radiation that hits us in the north is actually more than further south. And so we do have to have yeah. those extras on top of what other council areas probably even have to consider. Um, those are the sorts of things we want to be able to do as well. And the Nationals plan, I mean, uh, it leaves me very wanting in terms of yeah. if you're going to tell us we have to spend this on this, what else are we going to have to do all of the other things we need to do as well? One of the um, issues uh, with the co-governance has been a, a, a source of contention really is a, the, all the quartered all around co-governance. Um, it's still in there, but it, it, it's, well, it's still in there. Um, how, you know, in an entity like Entity A, how do all those iwi and hapu, I think there's 45 of them, work together? Do you know, this is one, uh, this is a real success story for me. Um, when Three Waters first came across the table when I was just a council on the far north district council, you know, the concern to raise at the table, do you know what, how on, up here we've got 11 mandated iwi authorities, how on earth are they going to be able to organise to fit 45 into X number of seats, it's going to be impossible, do you know what? They've, they've hit the ground running, they've already done it, Waipuna Arangi is the um, Māori representative group which has already been set up, they're already mobilised, we're actually the ones dragging the chain. Local government now and central government are the ones dragging the chain in this yeah. space. So I, I have a huge mahi to our mana whenua who, who have organised, who have rallied, and it's us who are the ones who need to actually um, get up and at them. If you ask any Māori uh, who looks at this, you know, if anything, um, co-governance arrangements are not strong enough. Yeah. I mean, what we have is... Um, mana whenua who um, are represented on these regional representative groups which along with local councils will then decide on the boards themselves um you know that's not co-governance you know <laughs> that's um yeah. what co-appointment co co-management of the appointments process for the board you know uh, it has been misrepresented um it has been misconstrued time and time again you know because it's a political right. football and it's what, election year it's hoha but um it's what, wrong what do you make of um Kieran McNulty's um response you know to the co-governance kind of court at all he's basically saying there's he's being pretty straight there's uh, obligation under te tiriti do you welcome that Oh, absolutely. You know what? People are stupid. You know, if they are the the if we look at resource management reform, the new acts are actually going to empower Māori even more, rightfully so, to have a say over the resources in our country as um, as mana whenua, as signatories to Te Tiriti or Waitangi. If you don't have Māori at the table from the get go, from the start, then it means it's going to be a much harder process. You're going to have less buy-in. If you ensure that Māori are part of the conversation, or this is the story for anyone, right? This is the, the exact same argument with Three Waters, is that the public in New Zealand feel like they weren't a part of this journey, they weren't a part of the moulding of it. And it's like, well, welcome to what it feels like to be a Māori. You know, things just happen to you. You don't really feel like you're here to say over it. So yeah. people just need to um, wait and see, I guess, because you know what? The world's not going to end. 
things are actually probably going to be a lot better. And, you know, our tile is going to be even better off for it. Kia ora. Nice to talk to you this uh, today. Tēnā e mihi ana ki au koe. Ei, ngā mihi nui tēnā koe te. A uh, kāti, kia tahuri ake tātou ki te pai toranga pū o mata i nai nei. She is green, but definitely not a crybaby, former MP Denise Roche. And he's a little bit of a crybaby, but only when the Warriors lose, which isn't lately. Oh, right. Commentator right. Shane Tapau tēnā kōrua. So over the weekend, Auckland mm. Mayor Wayne Brown spoke to TVNZ's Q&A with Jack Tame about the flood response. Let's quickly take a look at that. Nobody died because of lack of empathy. They died because of lack of planning of... of um, where they're living and the stormwater management. And you've got to raise a whole lot of things. Would three waters have made things better? To be, to be an effective leader, you have to bring people with you. Yes, you have to have I'd good relationships. The having them. the vision is one thing, but you have to bring people with you. And having empathy is how you bring people with you. Not necessarily. Having a clear vision and having uh, good results mm. will bring people with you. Mm. Was it a good result that night? Not at all, but mm. what will come out of it will be a good result. Former MP, former councillor mm. too, Denise Roche, what do you make of the response to the response? I think if I had voted for Wayne Brown, I would have been really disappointed uh, by that response. Uh, he really did seem to be uh, trying to, well, placing the blame elsewhere. And really, if he's the mayor, then his job is to get alongside his staff and make sure he knows what's happening and that he's got his finger on the pulse. I, and I really didn't see that in that interview with uh, with Jack Tame. I did see it with Moko from Northland, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's a mayor that actually understands his people and is prepared to fight for them. But it's not what I'm hearing from Wayne Brown, so it's very disappointing. We'll swing back to Moko Tepania shortly, but the the report commissioned by the mayor himself yes. found there was a system failure of leadership in the first 12 hours. Who do you think the report's referring to? Well, I think it refers to the council. Who's the head of the council? And that's the mayor. You know, also they have a specific area of personal responsibility and it's the, who holds the civil defence portfolio. Because one of the things they've been trying to do is, that, oh, well, it wasn't really our fault. We were new to the game. What about the last lot? Well, Sharon Stewart, who lives out there in East Auckland, has been the chair of uh, and has been responsible for that portfolio portfolio for for yeah for quite, quite a long time. Um, the thing is that the mayor was just overwhelmed. He, a lack of agility, a lack of understanding, uh, the seriousness of the situation. You know, he was saying that I, I wasn't sort of informed until 7 p.m. Well, mayor Brown, look at your outside your window at 4 p.m. And now, Fare, we knew we were in trouble. And uh, by 7, 8 p.m., no one was coming. You know, we lost four souls that day. We... My next door neighbour had to swim out of swim out of her uh, window. It was only by good luck, but not not by good management, that we didn't lose more people that day. Mm. It could have been a catastrophe. Yes, I possibly it. Mm. Um, you know, it wasn't the same in the city, but actually Victoria Park Market, I think, was underwater yeah. by about five o'clock. So yeah. maybe look out the other side of the council yes. building. Hoki uh, no ki te reo o te nota. Let's go back to Moko mm. Tepania's korero. What did you take away from Moko's comments? Uh, I think he's really got his finger on the pulse of what's happening up in Northland. Uh, he's a really intelligent and experienced person who is putting his people first, and I really love to see that. I think his understanding about Three Waters and the benefits that it can bring, to, um, particularly up there, and, and the restraints it's that they're under. It's a lot to know. It. It's a lot to it's take. It's a in. massive amount to know. What do you have to know as a councillor or somebody who's working in council about what even Three Waters does? Well, you have to be over it. Um, like you have to understand, you know, where the water comes from, where the water goes, and what are the problems with the infrastructure, so that you can make informed decisions, um, and uh, and actually have an understanding of the costs and what those costs mean for now for people who are ratepayers, but also into the future. Yes. And, you know, there's a lot of forward planning when you're in council, whether you're at councillor level, local board level or mayor. So it's always about keeping an eye to the future and Moko's really got a handle on it. It was really interesting because he talked about how actually they're lucky up in the far north because they've got multiple water sources and mm. infrastructure and stuff. And, you know, they've actually got quite a decent uh, rate payer database, but mm. they won't be able to afford no, everything they, no, they by won't. themselves. They won't. And this is the beauty of whether it be the original three waters or affordable water. What, what you've got is you've got a number of entities that can borrow off the ledger, 
currently councils won't be able to do that. But I think what we saw in Moko is an understanding of the detail, you know, mm -hmm. and he knows exactly what the issues are. He knows how enormous enor the enormity of it. But the other thing is that if you talk to Moko and his, his people around him, they know that we're in the middle of a climate crisis. And if we don't do something now, it's only going to get worse. And the reality for, for Tangatu Whenua, we only have the one river. We that is us. We didn't quite get mm. into, um, you know, what the, the National Party's, you know, um, plan was, but he seemed to talk about how, you know, how would their little council, who would mm. make, who would um, join well, up with their council to pay for things like the restoration of Lake Omapere, which is dire. Exactly. And, you know, the other thing is that uh, the leading agencies, international le leading agencies, have said one thing about this particular program that's got iwi on board, it brings stability, uh, and uh, also a, a, a long hist uh, history of of environmental management, which is the key, which is the key to this. National's policy is fairly much the same, except the opt out. The reality is, many councils throughout Aotearoa, New Zealand, have already opted out. They're simply not doing their duty. And you know, you have a look at those top of the South Island mayors that have been vicious against three water, vicious personally against Nanaia Mahuta, and they've fundamentally failed their people because they work. They have dozens, in fact, hundreds of boil notices on a weekly basis. Mm. Um, Nanaia Mahuta has been criticised for not explaining the legislation well enough. Uh, people have actually talked about Kieran McNulty and how clear he is um, in explaining it. Do you think he delivered it well? Is it, is it going to be different? Um, I mean, Kieran McNulty has been quite clear that it's not really th that different from mm. what was originally on the table. It's just these 10 entities instead of four. Um, H has the I, public had a couple of years to, cons to, to, to understand it better, perhaps? Oh, probably they have, but I think the main, the main change is that it's being fronted by a Pākehā man now. Yeah. And there was a huge amount of racism thrown at Nanaia Mahuta because she is Nanaia Mahuta. Mm. Um, and that was used to drive up um, you know, a lot of the dog whistling and opposition to it. So um, fundamentally, it's not much difference. I mean, my, I've never thought that this was really a way of um, implementing te tiri te o waitangi. It doesn't give mana motahake or tino rangatera tanga ta iwi Māori or hapu. Um, but it is a step towards having Māori at the table, you know, the appointment table, but it's a table. Do you yeah. think Denise is right? I mean, oh, I've had a few uh, comments. Oh, he's a good bloke. No, no, look, I, th I, think, I think he is, and I think he's plainly spo spoken, but I think Denise is right. You know, I've been around politics a long time, the viciousness of, of racism uh, that was stirred up by mainstream parties mm. and, main sh and, 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 and media uh, is... Uh, unparalleled. But also I think that un unfortunately what we saw over the last sort of five or six weeks um, with um, the, the cycling Grabella and many of the uh, many of uh, parts of Aotearoa struck by um, what mm. we're going to continue to see as a result of the climate crisis, I think it actually gave us all a kick in the backside and just Before, said, geez, we need to focus on this and we need a long-term fix. Just wanted to jump in there. Mm. Was Nanaya Mahuta let down by Jacinda Ardern? Did they leave her out in the cold? I think collectively she she was let down, but I think that uh, in a few years' time we'll look back, she was the impetus in terms of the change mm. that was needed. Kinga Take Torangapu, lots of announcements and speculations mm. in some of those electoral seats. Uh, Marama Davidson has announced she won't be standing uh, in Tamaki Makaurau. James Shaw stood aside in Wellington Central to make way for Tamith Tamitha Paul. Um, is this the right approach for the Greens? Um, I think it's probably a good one uh, because it does it does leave the, the co-leaders more time to get right across the country. And it's a huge load campaigning in an electorate, even if it's just for the party vote. It's still a massive task to work alongside your um, campaign committee within your electorate and do that co-leadership role. So, and as well as that, they're both ministers, so mm. they've still got that workload as well. So I think it is sensible. Um, it does signal that, you know, the, the, a, a more sort of like, okay, co-leaders are going to be states people now, um, which is uh, may not be in keeping with the old Greens that I come from, but, mm. uh, but I think it's probably a useful use of resources. Um, it's never good to have any infighting there, Shane, mm. but uh, Elizabeth Kirikiri, will she survive those baby cry, uh, cry baby comments? 
And in, and should she be well, looking? Well, she was fairly well looked after from, by the initial list. Let's see whether she holds that ranking of four. Uh, one thing you've got to say about the Greens, they're very democratic, and it will mm. be the membership uh, that makes the decision. Uh, here's the reality, though. The reality is that Chloe is an electorate MP, and if things go south for the Greens, she's going to be very important in terms of in terms of them, them holding on. Uh, just in relation to uh, Marama, yeah, very pragmatic, but here's the reality, Denise. Um, for some for some reason, uh, the Greens really haven't had traction in working class seats. They get more votes out of Epsom and Wellington Central mm -hmm. and Christchurch Central than they do out of Tamaki Makoto or Mangare. And uh, I think it was just a, pu a purely pragmatic um, decision that um, Marama has made. Just on Elizabeth Kirikiri again, mm. would you, you know, should she be more concerned about some of those Māori wahine that are coming through on the list behind her, who Hannah Linden, uh, Kahurangi Carter, uh, Tamantha Paul? Yeah, I think there's a, I think that if there's one good thing that the Greens have done, and I think they've done a few good things, is they've actually tapped into some really very talented young Māori woman, and uh, and if I was of Elizabeth's sort of age and sort of stature, I'd be welcoming and trying to total with those young women as much as as much as I possibly could. Would you have investigated? Does that warrant an investigation? Oh, it probably does, but it's like any political party. There, are people don't always get on. Mm. It's very, it's very com competitive, mm. um, and particularly during list ranking time, it's uh, it's also emotionally incredibly draining to go through. Um, so I feel for all of them, even Chloe, who is mm. you know a really good electorate yeah. MP as well. But uh, it's easy to make mistakes mm. and we don't all have to be friends all the time. What is a real big problem is that it's a massive distraction yeah. for yeah. the Greens uh, and that's probably the, the biggest um, outcome that they're cross about. Have the Greens done, done enough to make their way back into Parliament and to government if they make it? What policies you know, should they be focusing on in this election campaign? Well, I think um, the Greens have got the opportunity to eat Labour's lunch at this election. Uh, we've had, you know, Labour has had the opportunity to get a whole bunch of stuff done over the last three years with their massive majority, and they just haven't. And to some extent, I'd say that the Greens haven't used their power of sitting in the crossbenches very much either. And, um, and so now's the opportunity to really come through with some strong uh, climate justice policies, some strong uh, 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 social justice policies and housing and poverty um, uh, policies, and also, of course, uh, around the environment. Mm. Now they can really, really push it through. And these should be the, these are traditionally the focus for the Greens during mm. election period, but now's the time to come up with, and we'll see it, we'll see them deliver policy as we get close to the elections, but they can really be showing themselves as quite different from Labour as we get closer to the elections. Do you think uh, the Labour Party's, well, the government's concentration on trying to get as many of that swing middle vote yeah. as possible is leaving some room on the left for the Greens? Not on the left for the Greens. I think that's uh, the problem that they have, that people sometimes try to try, find it difficult to figure them out. I get social justice, I get uh, justice or uh, environmental justice, but I think the Green Party needs to be an environmental party and they need to focus more on that. And I think that's where they've captured their vote in the Epsoms in the uh, Wellington Centrals and what we call the teal vote. I think that's, so, I think that's so the area that's in, rich. In your idea yeah. of the spectrum, where does the Māori Party sit on there? Oh, Where's I think, their vote? Oh, no, Māori vote is, is, is centre-left. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident of that. And, uh, and you know, I think we're going to talk in a minute about some of the seats that they're targeting. Yes, I was going to mm. say, the Manurewa seat's looking interesting. So is the Māngari one. You remember our former MP, Louisa Wall, who held the Manurewa seat, withdrew in 2020. It's reported, well, it's, it's, there's some assumptions she might stand for Te Pāti Māori, which she's at least talking to them. Is that clever? Oh, I think it's really interesting. Uh, uh, the Manirewa seat is like a strong Labour Party mm -hmm. um, stronghold, you know, and, and they've got a massive machine there. So uh, it would really take some doing to uh, to topple the Labour Party candidate there. I think they got 73% mm -hmm. of the vote last time. But uh, I... I, She's got great name recognition, She right? totally has. Yeah. Uh, and I think what she would also do is probably drive up the Māori Party vote in yeah. the electorate, which is always useful. Which well. is what they're pro probably I, I, trying to do with Dave Latelli. Yeah, David yeah. Latelli, who um, 
has great name recognition. From yeah, Hotel. yeah. And I think if there was a bit of a chance, it would be there because you've got William um, Seal, yeah. uh, who's retiring, and you've got uh, Lydia Sosini, who sort of doesn't have the gravitas, doesn't have the name recognition. Money Rewood's going to be an interesting battle. And my gosh, how times have changed. Uh, we're John Tamahere and Louisa Wall have been uh, become, you know, uh, cohorts. My gosh, I remember when I was in the Labour Party, they would spit tax at each other. So, you know, this is interesting times. Look, she's not going to, Louisa will not win Mani Rewa, um, but she, I think it does give a chance to up that, that, that Māori vote. You know, if you get one or two Māori seats and a two and a half percent, you're going to be... Uh, yeah, that you are going to be the kingmaker, and the other thing is that which could also lead to an uh, overhang. So we might be talking about 121, right, 122 yeah. mm. so parliamentarians. If, if Shane's, you know, talking about the numbers in Parliament, and mm. you'll know those well. It's um, so if the if the, Māori, if the party Māori is looking for that party vote, and they do get perhaps Debingari, Wapakan, Rawiri, Waititi through, what kind of numbers would they need in the party vote to get more? Uh, that they'd, they'd need to get more. They basically need what is it, one percent? Uh, uh, and what are they calling at the moment? But they're anywhere between two, two, two and, and a half. But yeah. one, one and a half percent plus yeah. the two seats. Jitai Hudu, uh, and, and, and is that the right place for them to be two. looking in the general mm. seats for those party votes? Well, that's that's really interesting. For the party vote. Well, the party they do get uh, general mm. voters um, giving them their party vote. So why not go for it? Yeah. Do you think? I think so. Hey, uh, I'm not sure I'm trying to sort of take over the show, uh, <laughs> but can we have a little chat about Northland? Fascinating we event going up north. I probably haven't got time, but you can okay. tell me in 30 seconds. Oh, here's, I reckon that there is a cup of, deal, cup of tea deal possible up in Northland with Shane Jones and the National Party. Put it in your pocket, Ooh. try to put, save it for another day. Let's see if it's a reality, but I think that, that that's a real possibility. This is not the first time I've heard this. From Shane, but what do you think? Is it a? Uh, yeah, no, I think that's definitely a possibility. I think the National Party is quite quite good at doing deals with, with people to support them, and particularly a potential support partner. Yeah, well, yeah. a second potential support oh, partner. Second. <laughs> yeah, second potential support partner. Desperate times, Great. desperate measures. The polls stay close. Anything's on. Yeah. 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 Thank you for your time today and great kōrero. Tēnei kā mihi kau anu anu atu nei ki ngā mata Māori i whakakākahu i o rātou whakāro. Ki tēnei pai i te rānei, he taumata huatau i pikia, he puna kōrero i rukuhia, he koringa hiri kāpō te otinga. Kanui te mihi ki te punga whakatonga rewa me te māngai pāho. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in a fortnight. No hōra mai.